Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We got an echo. Welcome to the uh, meeting of the Dighton Board of Health, Wednesday, March 22nd, 2017. I think we're all set now. Mm -hmm. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Approval of the minutes. Madam Chair, I move that we approve the minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of Health from February 15th, 2017. I second that. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Correspondence. Please. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Tonight we have several food recalls. You take those two. First recall we have is B International issues an allergy alert on undeclared milk in plastic hot tubes with chocolate lentils. B International of Chula Vista, California is recalling its 1.7 ounce plastic hot tubes with chocolate lentils because they may contain undeclared milk protein. People who have allergies to milk may run the risk of serious a life-threatening allergic reaction if they consume this product. Second one that I have here is Eurocan Manufacturing voluntarily recalls Bonsdale Farms pig ears because of possible salmonella health risk. I want to check this and see if there's any around this area. Does it say? Let's ask our animal <laughs> control person. <laughs> usually, pig's ears are something that we give dogs as treats. Okay. And they're usually um, roasted. They never put formaldehyde or anything like that. <clears throat> so there is definitely a, a way if there's some kind of bacteria that uh, you get a dog set. Is this something you buy at a, a any pet store? Has some. Oh, okay. It's a salmonella. Can affect the animals eating the products. And there is a risk to, to humans from handling the contaminated pet products. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have one from Advanced Fresh Concepts Franchise Corporation voluntarily recalls edamame due to potential health risk. Advanced Fresh Concepts Franchise Corporation of Rancho Dominguez, California is recalling its edamame, in parentheses, soybeans, dated between January 3rd and March 17, 2017, because it has the potential to be contaminated with Listeria monocytogenes. Contamination was discovered via random testing under AFC's Quality Assurance Program. <coughs> Listeria monocytogenes is an organism which can cause serious and sometimes fatal infections in young children, frail or older adults, pregnant women, and others with weakened immune systems. Although healthy individuals may suffer only short-term symptoms, such as high fever, severe headache, stiffness, nausea, Abdominal pain and diarrhea, listeria infection can cause miscarriages, stillbirths, and fetal infection among pregnant women. No illnesses have been reported to date. <coughs> I 
States and New England that got shipments. Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Hampshire. So just be aware of that. And here's a picture of what this recall looks like. Thank you. And I have two pet food recalls. Well pet voluntary, <coughs> voluntarily recalls a limited amount of one recipe of canned topper for dogs due to potential elevated levels of naturally occurring beef thyroid hormone. It's a voluntary recall. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and it appears the only product is Wellness 95% Beef Topper for Dogs. 13.2 ounce cans, and we have the UPC code. If anyone has this pet food, dog food, and has any questions, please give the selectman's office a call. Uh, this is what the can looks like. Thank you. And I got one more. Blue Buffalo voluntarily recalls one lot of Blue Wilderness Rocky Mountain recipe. TM, red meat dinner, wet food for adult dogs due to potential health risk. This dog food also has been recalled, this particular lot, because of elevated levels of naturally occurring beef thyroid hormones. Dogs ingesting high levels of beef thyroid hormones may exhibit symptoms such as increased thirst and urination, weight loss, increased heart rate, and restlessness. These symptoms may resolve when the use of the impacted dog food is discontinued. However, the prolonged consumption of these symptoms However, with prolonged consumption, these symptoms may increase in severity and may include vomiting, diarrhea, and rapid or difficulty breathing. Should any of these symptoms occur, contact your veterinarian immediately. This is a 12.5 ounce container, and I think anyone that knows Blue Buffalo usually sees the wilderness picture on it with the wolf. But it's, uh, if you have any of the um, Rocky Mountain recipe, red meat dinner, that's Blue Buffalo, if you have any questions, please get in touch with, uh, and you need more information, please get in touch with the Board of Selectmen's office. Uh, what we're planning to do with all these recalls is set up a notebook that we can have out in the foyer so that if anyone has any questions or wants to check on recalls after we announce them, they can just come into uh, town hall and the information will, will be available. Uh, the next item is the Dighton Public Water Supply Sanitary Survey Report. This was sent to the Dayton uh, Board of Selectmen's office on March 8th from Catal O'Brien, Dayton Water District, concerning the Dayton public water supply. Uh, please find attached a sanitary survey report for a survey, survey performed at the Dayton Water District. The Dayton Water District is determined to have an adequate capacity rating. This system is currently complying with all national primary drinking water standards and mass DEP drinking water regulations. In addition to meeting all drinking water regulations, the system demonstrates a willingness and ability to plan for a wide variety of future impacts. This will be um, 
here in the Board of Selectmen's office, it, it's a pretty, pretty extensive testing that they do <coughs> to come up with their rating. Um, there's, there's about 20, 20 something pages, actually 13 one-sided pages. Um, if anybody would like to see it, describes all capaci capacities of all the wells that we have here in town. Um, the inventory and their maintenance program, how they, they, they maintain the water supply here in Dighton. Uh, you have uh, all the treatments that uh, the water goes through. Um, they have the Dighton Water District Treatment Plant, and what their objectives are. It's pretty intensive. Um, a little above my pay scale to go through it all so if you're um, interested in reading this like I say we'll have that on display here in the Dayton Selectman's office uh, anytime you'd like to look at it okay. announcements the annual town election will be held on Saturday April the 8th 2017 at the Dayton Elementary School from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. There will be a rabies clinic on April 29th from 2 to 3 p.m. at the North Dighton Fire Station. $12 for immunizations, cash only. The town clerk will also be issuing, issuing dog licenses that day. Are you planning to do chipping? I am not. I, know I can't get enough chips before then. Okay. Uh, the Dighton, um, what's the fee for chipping? When we do it there, it's $25 when we do it there. Well, that's office at 70. Okay, oh. so are you going to order chips? So I'm going to order chips so I can, I can do it at somebody's house if they need me to. Hmm. Okay, so when you get your chips, let us know. Um, so the animal control officer is going to get chips, uh, and if anyone wants to have a pet chipped, um, just get in touch with the Board of Health. But we will announce when she has the supplies so that uh, you'll be able to take care of that for $20, $25 instead of 70 That's <laughs> quite a savings. <laughs> um, the Dighton Lions Food Bank distribution will be held on March 25th in the lower level of Town Hall. Trash bags, shops, disposal containers, and recycling stickers are all for sale at the Board of Selectmen's office call 508-669-6431 for more information. Burning season is now through May 1st, 2017. Permits may be obtained at Dighton Fire Station, 300 Main Street, for $10. Checks only, payable to the town of Dighton. There is a winter parking ban in effect until April 1st. No parking is allowed on any street during this time. And landfill stickers are available at the transfer station during regular hours on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Payment by check only to the town of Dighton for $15. Your vehicle registration is required because the stickers are not transferable. Uh, old business, review, discuss the act status, separating the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Health. Uh, I don't believe there's anybody here tonight on this. Um, the committee meets on the 28th and they will have a meeting, uh, their final report at the selectmen's meeting a week from tonight. New business, review discuss act regarding a complaint at 2651 Pleasant Street in Dighton. The uh, Board of Health received several complaints by email with pictures attached to them concerning a uh, farm operation on Pleasant Street. We have had the inspectors go out, inspect the property, talk to the property owner. And I don't believe he's here this evening because I know he, ha he works a couple of jobs. Uh, in any case, I am going to call on uh, Mr. James Aguiar, who was one of the inspectors that went out we also, I was, I was there at the inspection site, as was Mr. Ferry, the highway superintendent, uh, Mr. Aguiar, Mr. Bernardo, the health inspector, and uh, 
Mrs. Ferry, the animal control officer. So, Mr. Aguiar. Sure. <clears throat> Thank you, Mrs. Chairwoman. Hello, everyone. Hello, Dighton. I'm going to speak directly on uh, any general bylaw violations that exist. I'll defer to my colleagues on other items that were found the day of the inspection. So this letter is dated uh, today. It's a notice of general bylaw violation for the property loaded at 2651 Pleasant Street. Property owner, the Dighton Building Department is aware of floodlights located at your property that may be in violation of the general bylaw known as spotlight and floodlight. And I'll quote, this bylaw says to prohibit a resident's spotlight or floodlight from shining directly onto a neighbor's home or property and to restrict the direct beam of light to the owner's own property so as to avoid being a nuisance. <clears throat> the letter goes on. During a recent site inspection with health officials, you were made aware, <coughs> whilst this is directed to the property owner, Mr. Raposo, you were made aware of the potential violations and agreed to redirect lighting to ensure compliance with the town's bylaw. A subsequent nighttime inspection conducted by my office occurred last night, Tuesday evening, March 21st. During that inspection, I noted that all of the floodlights facing roadways and neighboring properties had been redirected. However, it became apparent that the lights facing to the east, which is toward the backyard facing Park Avenue, are still creating a nuisance and remain in violation of the bylaw. This condition is caused by the water that is collected in the depressed area of your backyard and allows light shine anywhere in that direction to reflect off the water surface. This, condi excuse me, this condition can actually create a larger glare than the light fixtures themselves and therefore create a circumstance that still creates a nuisance. The easiest solutions to be in compliance with said bylaw will be to disconnect the lights directly facing east, which is to the rear of the fenced animal coop area, until the area has dried up, or you can reinstall the lighting so that is directed away from the water's surface. If you choose to leave the lights in the current location and turn them off until the water dries up, a reinspection will take place before they are allowed to be re-illuminated. Additionally, the town has been made aware that the exterior lighting at your property has been illuminated during the nighttime hours. Illumination of these lights for the entire dusk to dawn hours would further be in violation of this bylaw, as this would create an obvious nuisance for the neighborhood and motorists traveling in the area. It is also my understanding that the overnight lighting may also be affecting the normal activity of the farm animals and may create additional nuisances. The ACO Animal Control Officer can expand more on those instances. I close by saying thank you for your continued cooperation in this matter. The town will look for further compliance of this bylaw on the outstanding items as indicated no later than Monday, 327, 2017. Now, other items that fall under my jurisdiction are permittable acts, meaning building permits. This particular property owner has received three building permits since he's taken ownership of the property. Uh, one of them I have in front of me, which was for uh, front porch reconstruction. The other two are for a solar system install, uh, which is a roof mounted solar array, and uh, for weatherization, which includes uh, items that MassSave um, supports and uh, promotes insulation, attic insulation, weather stripping, things of that nature. So Mr. Raposo, uh, although he has had some violations, does uh, appear to want to conform with the regulations, at least in my office. Um, when I met with him out at the site, he was not combative or adversarial, uh, although uh, once I explained to him the obvious, which is the lighting and the amount of it, he, he quickly became aware that he understood why it could be a potential <coughs> concern. Um, so it seems that he's moving toward compliance. Um, I intend to follow up to make sure that everybody's quality of life is adhered to. Um, but I do so only under the governance of the existing laws we have at hand. So uh, it's my intent then to uh, follow up 
on what I indicated in my letter. And uh, based on the relationship I've had with them thus far, I, I think that will probably come into compliance. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody have any questions of Mr. Aguiar while he's at the podium? Excuse me, ma'am, ma'am, excuse me. Would you stand and identify yourself? Yes. Allison Sandalisky, Pleasant Street. Yes. Um, I just had a question. I was concerned about the asset structures. Mm -hmm. As far as are they, were there had, did you have to get permits yeah. in order to build? That's a good question. I, I should have elaborated, and I yeah. apologize for not. Uh, there are exemptions under the building code for agricultural buildings. Uh, the fences that have been erected do not require a permit because there are no poles that are put subterranean. They all just sit on the ground. And the buildings that uh, house the animals themselves are exempted from permits. So there are no permits that are required. Uh, and I can assure you the way I run my office, if they were, then he would have had to obtain them. So, okay. Anybody else have a question of Mr. Agia? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Ferry. I have been out to this property twice, um, twice with the building inspector. Um, we went out the first time because I had had two calls in within two days of roosters crowing all night long. So I went out to, to check on the welfare of the animals. And what I found was animals are healthy. They, um, they only have four roosters on the property, even though it probably sounds like more. Um, there are probably 70 animals on the property altogether, ranging from peacocks to guinea hens to ducks to geese to all sorts of different kinds of chickens that he raises just to raise. They're not for anything specific. He has rabbits that he raises for meat on the property. And the animals are healthy. Now, we went back. Um, lights on when the, we have seen a video with the lights on and the roosters crowing and that will any kind of light like that will disrupt and make animals think it's daytime so roosters are going to be crowing animals are going to be moving around um, the guinea hens I think are the what makes the most noise on that property and guinea hens are usually on somebody's property for protection they eat rats, they eat mice, they eat ticks, they eat all sorts of stuff, and they are mean. They can be mean. And they make a whole bunch of noise. Um, I, can, <laughs> I can be on a farm and have a dog lay on the ground and not even lift, lift up his head, but I walk towards that guinea hen cage and everybody knows I'm there. That's what they're for. Manure was a problem. He has a system for his manure. He puts it around his fruit trees. It doesn't even, underneath the rabbits, it doesn't even drop on the ground. So he has containers that he moves and puts it under his fruit trees for, um, for food. And when he cleans out his chicken coops, he does the same thing. There are animals that walk around the property, turkeys, basically. There's a few turkeys that will meet you in the driveway if you come into, on the property. Um, as far as we could tell, they don't leave the property all the time. They may once in a while. So, I mean, for me, there is no bylaw against having roosters in this town, so he can have roosters. There is no bylaw saying that he can't have guinea hens or anything like that. Um, so, for me, I had two specific things I wanted him to do, and he did them by the time I went there, so I was, I was happy with that. Does anyone have uh, questions for uh, Mrs. Ferry? Yes, ma'am. Hi, Susan Barrows, 2625 Park Avenue. Could you allude to not all the time leaving the property because two weeks ago they were in my yard fucking quacking and actually chasing me while I was trying to get in my vehicle to work. Well, I woke up my mother who's elderly, so that's how loud they were. We um, walked, when we were there, we walked the street, the whole block. And it had snowed, so we would have seen the marks. There was no. There wasn't no, any snow. I have a picture of them. I, I understand that, snow. but what I'm saying is, as of the time it snowed, they hadn't gotten out, so that would lead me to believe it's not all the time. Snow could you please clarify? No, because they move around whether there's snow or not. They're ducks and geese and everything like that. So, may you, could you please <laughs> allude the definition of not all the time? Is there a percentage of days within the month they're allowed to roam free? Not all the time would be you know, once or twice a month. 
So they're allowed to go on my property as will and be chasing I me at 6.30 in the morning. I don't think it's a dog that willingly goes. They go because they see something or they're taking a stroll. They're not, I mean, geese can be malicious. Turkeys, not usually. Well, um, I'm not saying they didn't go after you. I'm just saying not usually. They, um, he tries to keep them on his property. He really does. And as I said, while we were there, we, we did walk the whole area to make sure that we didn't see a lot of prints. Because if they were uh, habitual offenders, there would be prints going all the time out of there, even in the snow. Uh, Mrs. Ferry, was there any evidence of, uh, I'm thinking of the, the no. emails we got, um, along with the pictures we got, any evidence of either on his property or when you did the walk around of manure and or feed uh, on the road anywhere where it shouldn't have been? No, that was not. And I wasn't the only one that walked the property myself. Mm -hmm. The building inspector and Mr. Ferry also walked around that whole area okay. looking. All right. Uh, any other questions? Well, boy, 170 Beach Street. Oh, we have your take, too. Yes. <laughs> I have, you know, the, it doesn't matter about the lights. Before they put the lights up, the roosters were crawling at 3 o'clock in the morning. I have chased the churches off of my garage roof. Mm -hmm. um, I think that all these vocal birds have no place in the residential area. Everyone has small lots down there, and everyone is sitting on their property line. So you say 50 feet off my property line is 50 feet away from my bedroom. My point. That's a bylaw thing. Uh, right now we don't have any bylaws that say. Well, what can we do about the nuisance? The nuisance noise. <clears throat> that would be. And the more, smell is coming. More of a civil thing, the nuisance noise, than something. Because I don't have a bylaw that I can say to him, you can't do no this. Limit on the number of birds you can have no. No, there is not. As long as they're healthy and they're kept well, and they are. Any more questions for Mrs. Ferry? Okay, uh, I will ask Mr. Bernardo, the health inspector, to uh, give a report on his inspection. Good evening. Um, Kevin Bernardo, Board of Health. Um, I have a letter dated on March 19th. It's directed towards Mr. Aaron Raposa. It says, Dear Property Owner, this letter is to follow up on the inspection conducted at the above mentioned address, which is 2651 Pleasant Street. As we discussed, health related complaints were made regarding rodent activity and feces with feed running into the road. During the inspection, no rodent activity was observed. The animal feed was stored in a storage shed and no feces were observed along the road. Please note, during the inspection, the ground did have snow cover. At, a, at the follow-up inspection, an additional review of the area will be conducted. As part of the complaint investigation, we did, ho uh, did however, observe violations pursuant to 105 CMR 410-602. Uh, this order requires you to remove the specific rubbish described in the order from the above mentioned property. Um, that citation was for rubbish on land. Um, the violations were rubbish stored on the property near the shed and under the snow cover. Uh, the other violation was large pile of brush. Owner was instructed to remove the pile in a responsible and safe manner slash burning permit. Um, a reinspection will be conducted on April 24th 2017 to verify if the violations have been removed. Failure to comply will result in a $100 fine. Uh, this letter also gives a di um, description of what rubbish is. Um, Mr. Raposo was very receptive um, during the inspection. He explained that he would obtain a burning permit uh, and he understands that they run out May 1st. Um, we, all, we had a discussion. It's going to be slightly difficult because, as you see, where that pile of brush is, it's surrounded by a moat. Um, so, he's, again, we instructed him to do it in a safe, responsible manner. But as, as of right now, he has two violations. The rubbish, um, miscellaneous items scattered through the yard, and that large pile of brush. 
Take any questions? Any questions for Mr. Bernardo? Does any, <coughs> does, uh, is, will Tom be back? Because there was, uh, Jim, could you just see if Tom is out there? Because there were some <coughs> complaints about trees. Um, I don't have any questions you. for you, Kevin. Um, while we're waiting, um, uh, we did receive emails, and there were pictures attached, and these pictures, uh, one shows two turkeys in the road, one shows the brush pile and water. Um, I can tell you the water that was there last week is a lot more than what's showing in the picture, but of course we've had snow melt and runoff and everything. Um, One of the emails talked about, um, and they were similar, so uh, the one I have in front of me, noise from animals, which um, we've talked about, um, unable to open windows at night because of noise, heavy rains that floods the fields and runs down Park Avenue. He had an emergency. That's oh, okay. Back. Okay. Um, talking about heavy rains and his field floods and runs down Park and Avenue into my property. We did see, as, as Mr. Bernardo mentioned, a lot of water laying in the back with the brush pile in the middle. And one of the problems is, as you, those of you who live down there know, those are not town accepted roads. The, um, a lot of the water, there is a lot of runoff onto property because of the unaccepted roads. They, those roads are plowed by the town, but they are not town roads, so they're not paved and, and that sort of thing. Um, Mr. Ferry, I just got into uh, a comment here about uh, heavy rains, the, the field. They're talking about the, the, well, it's the backyard of Mr. Raposo, uh, where the brush pile is. After heavy rains, his field floods and runs down Park Avenue. And I was just starting to explain those are not town accepted roads. So if you want to address uh, the roads, the trees, because we had complaints about trees. Mr. Ferry is also the tree warden in town. Uh, and uh, obviously when he was down there with us, he was looking into those, those matters. But uh, he can tell you what he looked at and uh, whether or not he had findings that day. Yes, yeah, so the town's been um, taking care of the roads the best we could for many years. Um, for the most part, we gravel the roads. Uh, we don't add a lot of gravel, maybe maybe about eight yards a year. Um, it should, we, I don't believe we're contributing to trapping the water. Um, Mr. Raposa had commented on that. I don't believe we are doing that. Um, to the east, the, that, that would be the lowest part in relation to his property and the water does, when it's enough water fills up, it would come out on the east side and head to the northeast. Um, and, and you are correct, it's, to my best my knowledge, those are not accepted roads. Uh, we've researched that several times and um, that those are not accepted roads at all. Uh, as far as the trees, there was the complaints I had was uh, somebody was drilling holes on Beach Street. Mo most of the trees were on Beach Street and it, it appeared that so, right at the base of the tree that they were trying to kill the trees. Um, I, I don't have any evidence of exactly who was doing it other than a, a witness that was down there, but it was, did not, you know, we can't put the drill right in his hand to, to prosecute that. Um, I, either way, those trees would not be in my jurisdiction anyways, being that there's no road layout. Um, Usually, in a case like that, it would become a civil matter between the two about us. But as you drive down Beach Street, then the trees on the left would be the property of whoever owns the property on the left, correct? And the same with the right. In other words, correct. when you when you live on an unaccepted road, where is your boundary? Do e does each party own up to the middle of the road? It's it's very possible. The only way to tell is on a. a have a survey go in. It oh, depends okay. if there's a right away or an easement. I, I don't know what's in place there. Um, okay. Obviously, um, we have residents down there that need some assistance 
you know, they pay taxes for our town, so we do what we can within the means of the law. Um, does anybody have any questions for Mr. Ferry? What I will say, the, the uh, whoever owns the trees that were photographed with drill holes near the base, um, there was a comment in one of the emails that said that Mr. Ferry had looked at them and <clears throat> said that he would not be able to tell if those trees were going to live until he could see if the trees are going to leaf out. If you are a property owner down there and someone has damaged your trees, Mr. Ferry can take a look at them after they start to bloom and leaf. It's not a town problem because those are not town accepted roads. But if you need some advice, he is the tree warden, okay? Um, I just want to check to make sure all of the uh, items, uh, we, we heard from four different residents and um, noise, uh, mm -hmm. loose animals, um, concerns about um, rodents and manure, and feed not being stored properly. Those have been addressed by the inspectors. The lights have been addressed, and um, I believe you've been down there three times at least? I have. Okay, yes. and Mr. Bernardo is gonna go back again. Correct. Um, so, I, oh, one of the things I wanted to dispel, one of the first emails said that uh, Dighton is a right to farm community. Uh, no, Dighton does not have that bylaw, okay? Uh, but it does not mean that someone like Mr. Raposo is, is prevented from having the animals he's got. Everything that our inspectors have addressed tonight, uh, and, and they've done research looking for whatever, it, whatever would address the issues that were brought to us tonight. Everything they have looked at is directly related to state law, Board of Health regulations, town bylaws, CMRs, you name it, the kind of things that the town could actually enforce. And I think those have been summarized with the, uh, Mr. Aguiar's uh, work with Mr. Raposo on the lights. What Mr. Bernardo has said about what needs to be cleaned up and the fact he's going back. Uh, they did not find uh, animals neglected in poor condition or anything else. And as I said, Mr. Ferry just addressed the tree issue. Um, what I would like to know, does anyone have a general comment? Uh, just to show of hands, how many people live in the area we're talking about? Okay. And I would assume some of you are some of the people that sent the emails that haven't spoken tonight. Okay. I think it's unfortunate as far as living down there, and I understand about light and noise, but from what I have seen so far, all of the issues you have raised have been looked at by various inspectors, and everything that the town can do legally, enforcement-wise, is being done. He's entitled to have his animals. I know what a farm smells like, in the summer, that's not actually a violation. I know what it smells like. I lived on a farm from the time I was 10 years old and they used chicken manure, so I'm well aware of what it's like. But he also has rights under the law and all the town can do is enforce what you've heard here tonight. Now, if there are any concerns about animals being abused, neglected, running free up and down the road all the time, doing property damage, you need to report that back to the town. But um, at this point in time, I think the town has done everything it could do up to this point based on the information that's been given to us by the residents. All of the information that was given to us and all of the uh, matters that were brought to our attention have been looked into by the inspectors we have. 
Do you wish to comment anything? I mean, I we live in an area, so uh, Chairman Goulard and I live near each other, and we live in an area where um, I haven't quite identified what neighbor it is, but there are guinea heads uh, right near us, and they come in my yard and wake everyone up all the time. So I understand. <laughs> I did see, I didn't know uh, that. <laughs> when, uh, when we first moved to uh, a Gray Terrace, and Brett's on uh, Tremont, so we're just kind of around the corner from one another. Uh, the noisiest thing in our neighborhood happened to be peacocks, and mm -hmm. I had not heard peacocks, and when I heard it the first time, I thought it was a baby screaming. It was scary. And then somebody says, no, 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 that's a peacock. Um, I don't know where the peacock went. Uh, I don't know if it was attrition or what happened to it, but we don't hear peacocks, but we do hear guinea hens. Um, Mr. Cronin, you really live out in the country. Would you like to comment? <laughs> yeah, I know what kind of animals you have problems with. Oh, I, unfortunately, um, where I am is very rural. It's off, off of uh, Cedar Street, Lewis Street, and, and I'm sure a lot of you know. And uh, there's, there's a lot of acreage out there, and, and nobody around has any animals. The only animals I see are about 40, 45 <coughs> turkeys every day, a herd of 16, 17 deer. And, and that's about it. Um, um, I grew up, I, <laughs> right, right. I mean, we should change places, right? But um, to get back to the, to the meat of the matter here, um, I, I know, I know where you're coming from. Um, this is a case of this board not being neglectful or negligent. We have to stay within what we're capable of doing um, without getting ourselves into liability, the town into liability, forcing him to do something that there is no regulation or, or, or rules against. Um, other than having maybe a little uh, lack of courtesy, you know, for your fellow neighborhood, <coughs> um, the man is really not guilty of anything having these animals. We don't have in this town any any quantity limits on animals, um, okay. totally pigs. except for the pigs, right? Um, so th this is where the the problem or the situation stems from. Uh, to for us to go and tell him he's got to get rid of fifty of the chickens and half of the guinea, we we can't do that legally. You know, now we're facing. Uh, legality and, and you're going to put the town in court too. So um, I feel our hands are tied until there's regulations or bylaws presented at a town meeting on a warrant and passed. Um, it'll remain that way for just about any residential property. Um, you know, I feel, you know, because uh, I wish I could change spots with it because I wouldn't hear nothing out there. It's so big. But, uh, I just can't do it. Yes, ma'am. How many pigs are we allowed to have? Two. Three. Three. Oh, three. 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 Any certain types or Doesn't three no matter what no. they are? Doesn't matter what kind they are. Threes. Okay. Thank you. Three. Unless they have babies. And Thank you. Babies Thank are you. younger. No. Okay. Yes, yes. ma'am. At Mary Rose Park Avenue. I just want to know, like, the manure, you know, like, is there anything that can be put on it to cut the smell down? But I know they also use it for their trees. If it's worked into the ground like vegetable farmers do, because as I said, every spring when they clean out the chicken houses, the farm I worked on, until it was put underground, harrowed and plowed, it stunk. It, I mean, it was awful. If my son had rabbits, we used the, the manure in the yard around flowers. If you work it into the ground, it helps. Mr. Ferry? Yes, the short term. <clears throat> Use you can put lime on top. That will regular garden lime. lime. I just know with the summer coming, right. with anyone, yep. It, yep. you know that it will just fester. Mr. Agia, yeah. if I may, Ms. Chairman, I I don't want to rehash what's been discussed tonight, but I can I can feel the tension in the room, and I'm sensitive to that. Everybody here at this table and the inspectors are sensitive to that. But we're only obligated to, and, and, and we'd be, 
as Stuckman Cronin said, it would not be correct for us to enforce actions that aren't on the books. And there's no one who knows how to scour the books better than me, and I tried. There's nothing. But your quality of life has been affected, and we understand that. But the people who have the animals also have the rights to have them. So, you know, one of the great things about this country is that in a democratic society, if there are enough people who stand up and want to make a change, then you can do that. So we can't create rules and regulations to, to uh, take care of the what if in life. We deal with them as they come. So as Selectman Cronin said, if something needs to be done to put more basis in the books to prevent things like this from happening in crowded neighborhoods, then it's up to you as taxpayers to get together and propose a bylaw that would be beneficial and equitable for everybody involved. So, thank you. Thank you. Yes? Alex, I'm Melissa Pleasant Street. Mr. Yager, could you uh, jump on the, uh, the lights again? Sure. We kind of went through that quickly. Sure. Um, I am not in a butter for the property, um, but you know I can see the lights. I'm probably about a quarter mile away, mm -hmm. and I can see the lights at night. Um, I can't imagine to feel the pain of the neighbors who live right next door, feet away from the house. Um, and this is, like you said, affecting their lives. Right. They've lived there, some of them, their whole lives. Right. And you know, I understand and respect that somebody has their right to their own property. So as far as those lights, I mean we're talking we're not talking like a floodlight. We're talking some serious floodlights right. on numerous structures, on trees that have been cut down and topped that are eventually will rot and fall. I mean we're talking some serious Right. Some serious lighting over there. So right. could you just go through your follow-up process again, like you said, sure. you're going to go back sure. as far as the, the dimming of the lights? I, I am just concerned that sure. the reflection of the water, it, it, that, so, when the water so when the water dries up, you know, those lights won't have to be re re redirected. I'm just a little bit... Yeah, I did. I, I said specifically in my letter that they would have to be redirected. Um, let, let me answer your question, uh, not in a summary form, but let me elaborate, okay? Um, when I... When I go out to do an enforcement action like this, I first have to look at the bylaw itself. And the language in the bylaw is very specific. It says that a spotlight, a floodlight, cannot directly affect your neighbor. Uh, the beam of light can directly affect your neighbor. Light pollution is an entirely different story, okay? So I had to go out and look at which lights are actually in my eyes as I drive through the neighborhood and could impact any of the neighbors around. We identified those, some of them have been redirected. I think all of them have been redirected. The problem is in the rear with the reflection on the water, it's actually exasperated because you know a light has a certain uh, lumens, but when you put it off a reflective surface, especially a still calm water source, it's gonna be uh, you know, increased exponentially. So that's why I indicated that those lights would have to be turned off or redirected entirely so that they don't shine off the water surface. Um, if the water dries up, which the owner did tell us uh, does happen, Tom Ferry uh, also reiterated that it does dry up. Um, as long as those lights aren't shining directly on the neighbor's property, they're not in violation of the bylaw. <coughs> now with that said, I felt the same way. I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of light pollution there. So I drove down the street to the Taunton Yacht Club, and I drove to some other facilities in town. I even drove by some lights right on the front porches of the neighborhood that I was driving through. And all of the lights, were able to be seen. Certainly not in the magnitude, with the exception of Taunton Yacht Club. Taunton Yacht Club, when I pulled down the street, I saw the same lumens on the road that I saw when I was driving through that neighborhood. So we don't have anything yeah, in our- business. The Taunton Yacht Club is a business. But there are it's residences right, right across the street. We have houses right across the street that are from the 1700s, some of the oldest houses in town. So there are people who can be impacted there too. So, you know- I, yeah, But isn't that zone a business? Uh, a business. No, it's actually pre-existing non-conforming. So, okay. um, look, I hear everything you're saying. I understand. I and that's why I'm making the suggestions if you feel that things need to be done yeah. to our current uh, laws on the books, then here's, th this is the forum that, you know, starts the process. Uh, everybody mm -hmm. has rights. Everybody has the right to their quality of life. Yep. And it's obvious by the crowd tonight that many people have been impacted. And this board doesn't take that lightly. None of us do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to comment? Yeah, one question. 
Is there an amount of manure that one person is limited to? Because if he keeps dumping and dumping on top of it, it's just going to keep raising and not coming as often. He does not have he does not have a pile on his property. He takes the buckets and he puts them around the trees. Yeah, but you keep putting them around the tree, that's going to build up. Oh, he's not. He, that would not be beneficial for him to do that. So what does he do with the rest of it? Then he would have to have a manage, management program to get rid of it. But right now, he's using it to work into the soil for his fruit trees. And he's got 40 or 50 fruit trees on that property. We, we had asked him, how, how are you managing right. this manure? Right. And he showed us around each tree, which is small. Yeah. And he said he's going to work it into the ground. But again, uh, when we do a follow-up, we can ask him again. I, uh, I mean, that's a lot how of you for, one, for yeah. one area. Well, yes and no. You only have to clean a chicken coop once a year. People do it a lot that, more than that. That water building is going to be interesting how much that's going that, on. They do it a lot more than that, but they only really have to do it because they, you think chickens are messy, but really they're not as messy as you think they are. Um, the rabbit manure, he, does, he cycles his rabbits. He's got six on the property now. After Easter, he will have none. So, and it could be next year before he gets more of boosters. I mean rabbits. He uses them for Easter and that kind of stuff. So. Um, come Easter, he may not have any bread and do it, and all the chicken stuff. But we do go out there. I have, I legally have to go out and inspect at least once a year for the state. So all those things, if anything comes up again, that will be. I have a question about um, compost pile next to a property line. Compost or manure? Compost. Okay, compost. Right on, <laughs> right on the property line. I mean, it's, they're piling something around the stump, grass clippings, wood chips, yeah. you know, probably a ferret. The code says specifically, um, what I had cited, the, the, the branches and the clippings. Um, you didn't see the compost pile over by the property line? During that day, was it covered with snow that day? It might have. Okay, yeah. Again, with a follow-up inspection, we're gonna do a walkthrough again and just see what was left. Because he did say, oh, there's a, be careful when you're walking, there's a, a few things on the ground that you might slip on. So we got to do our follow-up inspection. We didn't discuss that. Yeah. But again, I have to say, Mr. Raposa was very receptive. He, he understood where we were coming from. And uh, I could not neighbor. Yes, but when I spoke to him, I, I, as a regular person saying, hey, fresh pair of eyes, this is, this is a violation. And he, he understood where we were coming from, and he said he would correct it. And I think, um, I think that's going to go a long way. That's all. Does anyone else wish to speak? <coughs> yes. yes, Allison Sutherland, the Pleasant Street again. I have a question for Mrs. Berry. She said she um, would be doing yearly inspections on the animals. But it was also stated that there's no limit to how many you can have. So as time passes, we could have more and more and more. Are these things that are going to be checked? Do we have to physically call and can she inspect if it becomes more of a problem? Like, for example, five turkeys now running around, things like that. If you have other problems, yes. Okay. I can go out. I can go out and inspect, and I can go out there. The state requires me to go out once, take, a, once a year, take a number. You know, this is how many he has of this, this is how many he has of this. They're being kept right. That the new is going where it's supposed to go, and that kind of stuff. And that's just basically so the state knows where everything is. If we had a disaster in town, we know where to go and we move everything, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but there are farms in this town that I inspect quarterly because either I've told them they can't have more of something or they weren't <coughs> in compliance with something and I go back out. And yeah, they, they fixed what I wanted them to fix, but there's something else. So there are a few farms out there that I go out quarterly and they see my bright smile on their face and we go through everything. And Yes, one more thing. Um, I don't have this problem, but what if the chickens or whatever come onto your property? What right do you have, like, of shooing them off or if something happens to them when they're on your property? Well, it or the turkeys, on, how, like, they were next right, door. It would depend stuff. on what would happen to them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if it was natural, you know, they got into something that they shouldn't yeah. have, that's not your fault. Um, well, I wasn't thinking that. I just, you know, I was thinking, ah, yeah. But if they were injured from you, 
and they weren't attacking you, you weren't, your life was not mm -hmm. in danger, then yes, you could be held liable for that. Well, I have that problem. So I'm just curious, like if they, you know, they do come and stuff. Are there any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Uh, to conclude this, I will say that when I was out there with the inspectors, uh, and and they did more walk arounds after I left, and I know Mr. Agia has been back there to check lights at night and the day and adjust lights and things. Um, Mr. Raposo said. He couldn't be here tonight because he works a couple of jobs. He said he's going to watch this meeting on uh, TV. He also said that he would comply with anything the inspectors found. And he also said that he wants to live and be neighborly without problems. I will take him at his word. I'm hoping that, I think we're all hoping, that with the adjustment in lights or shutting lights off, uh, when the water goes, and, and all of the things that are decided, the cleanup has been done. When Mr. Um, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Mr. Bernardo goes back. Hopefully, this is going to improve the situation. It's not going to reduce the number of animals. I can't tell you it's going to be peaceful and quiet. And I can't tell you it isn't going to stink. But I am hoping we're going to see an improvement in the situation down there so that everybody who owns property down there can have the peaceful and quiet enjoyment of that property. Okay. Um, I think what the town can do has been explained to you tonight. If there are animals in the road and running loose, if you think animals are not being cared for properly, uh, let it get back to the uh, animal control officer. Uh, because I have known that Mrs. Ferry has gone out repeatedly uh, in some places in town. And if there is a need because animals are not being cared for properly, she will not hesitate to call MSPCA. We have. Uh, when you see her annual report in the town report, you will see uh, that there are cases in process right now that she has working with uh, MSPCA. Uh, so I am hoping things are going to get better. Uh, so all I can say is um, let's see what happens. Uh, I thank you very much for getting in touch with us. Uh, we want residents to know if they have problems uh, Bring them to my attention. We have inspectors to go out and look at things, and hopefully we can get them resolved. Um, I can't tell you all the problems are going to be solved down there, but let's let's hope for the best. Uh, he will be getting uh, another inspection from Mr. Bernardo. Uh, Mr. Aguiar's letter has been emailed. He will see the video of tonight. So, um, Mr. Raposo, when you see this video, I will ask you to. Do the best you can as far as your relationship with your neighbors. You have rights, they have rights. I think everybody wants to live in a peaceful, quiet neighborhood. Uh, you have a right to have your farm and your animals. But please, it, it would be beneficial to all if uh, everyone tried to get along. Uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, we will see some improvement across the board. Does anyone have any questions, comments, or anything? If not, thank you very much for coming. Uh, we'll move on to review, discuss, and act, uh, nominate inspector of animals. The animal, uh, the inspector of animals is actually a state appointment, and the form is in here, and uh, Mrs. Ferry is the inspector of animals, but this is an annual appointment by the state, and the town must send in the nomination so that the state can act on her reappointment. So at this time, I would ask for a nomination for Inspector of Animals. Madam Chairman, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to nominate uh, Animal Control Officer Stacy Ferry uh, as an, uh, Inspector of Animals. Motion's been made. Second that. And seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed?
Motion carries unanimously. Uh, it's a section here that you have to fill out and have notarized. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, Karen can do that. Yeah. I all the information is in here. Uh, I don't see any changes. You can look at that. Um, but at this point, I'm going to give this to you, and then uh, Karen can notarize it and ask her to make copies so we'll have it for the file. Okay, and we'll let you know when that comes through. Um, we are beyond the um, 7.30 deadline. We should be starting Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. um, do, um, is it okay with my colleagues if we defer these two items to the Board of Selectmen meeting? Sure. Bulky item right. pickup and that. hazardous waste. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. For those of you who may be here to, to hear about the bulky waste, uh, the bulky item pickup, and <coughs> excuse me, hazardous waste day. Because of it's beyond 7:30, we are going to move this to the Board of Selectmen's agenda, which is coming up shortly. Uh, inspectors' reports, I think we've covered. Uh, public input. Does anybody have anything other than what we've already discussed? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Seconded. Motion to made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. We'll be here. Cable in a few minutes. We will be back as the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.